Supro Blues King 12 just came in and the owner says bad power switch you know I think he may be right alright it's all on this little PCB so let me pull that out and see what we're up against well I've gotten little switches like this before I think at DigiKey I think NKK makes them I need to check the spacings Let's see if I can just replace them like with like. Worst comes to worst, I just replace all this. Well, I guess the power LED is built in there. It might be possible just to replace the power switch and leave the rest, but let's see what I can find first. As to the rest of it, fairly standard stuff. Let me see if I can adjust the exposure a little bit for you. Yeah, that's better. Shadows are fun. So everything's very compact in these. This is the older version of Supro. The newer ones have got some major issues. But these uh, Blues Kings, and I think the other one's the Delta King, pretty good inexpensive little amps. You know, don't expect them to last forever, but... And there are some quality issues at the price, but... Shouldn't be insurmountable. So let's mount them. Let's mount the heck out of them. About a year ago, I reworked this 68 Custom Deluxe Reverb. This is the one that you saw the speaker comparison video. It's in that electric blue cab with the Celestian Creamback 65 speaker. And all has been well before the owner until this past weekend. He was playing outdoors at a gig and the amp cut out and he found a blown fuse and he changed the fuse and it blew instantly so I said bring it in I don't see any damage inside and uh, that fuse is definitely smoked my money's on the rectifier tube but let's fire this up and see what we see okay new fuse installed 2 amp slow blow 3AG I've got my light bulb limiter on. I've pulled the rectifier tube. I'll leave it in standby. I'm going to power it on. This is just going to test pretty much the heater supply in the amp. There's not going to be any real current drawn from the HT side of the uh, uh, power transformer. So. No real illumination on the uh, limiter light is coming on no sparks in the output tubes so let's power it off I said my money's on the rectifier tube because rectifier tubes fail more than any other tube in the app as far as taking out uh, something that'll take out a fuse and it's easy enough to find out This uh, amp, like most vendors, does not have a separate HT fuse, just the mains fuse. All right, I'm ready to power this immediately off. I would not be surprised if we get a little bit of a light show from this thing. So let's see what's, what happens. It takes a little bit to warm up, though. Could still be one of the power tubes, but rectifiers are the ones that like to do big showy failure modes. But nothing's really happening. Alright, I'm going to connect a speaker to it. Make sure all my volumes are off so we don't have any hum. And I include the reverb level in that volume list. All right, let's take it out of standby. Other than the slight white noise from a 68 custom deluxe reverb. Not seeing any issue. 
Now the wall voltage right now is 110. It varies a lot in Memphis in this old neighborhood. It goes between about 109 and about 127 pretty much randomly throughout the week. And he said he was playing on a stage that was probably powered by a generator. And I'm wondering also whether that generator was set to the right uh, frequency. These tubes aren't getting very warm very quickly though. Make sure we have sound. Yeah. I would normally expect them to get a little bit hotter sooner. This one's just ever the slightest bit microphonic. Let me uh, move the speaker a little bit closer. It'll take some of this tension off the uh, speaker cable. Well, after all that buildup, we're not getting any kind of light show. Let me call the owner and uh, let this run for a while. Now they're getting hot. One of the reasons I like to check that is sometimes one tube will be drawing more current than the other. And of course, you know, if I meter them and set it all up to do that, I can, I can find that out. But you can also generally tell by the sound, and the amp is very clean, and by the fact that they're both hot. Now, sometimes if, it, if one's not drawing as much current, it won't be running as hot as the other, or the other will be running even hotter to, to compensate. So there are ways to tell whether I need to go in there and do the measuring. And one of the reasons I don't want to just go in there and start probing everything is I've got a lot of amps in proce progress right now. And uh, this one is going to be a free repair if repair is needed. He had me do quite a bit of work to this, and my, my inclination is on the first follow-up, you know, if there's just the tube, change out the tube, make sure the bias is good, make sure everything's fine, no charge. And I would prefer uh, not to uh, have too much time in a free amp, that's just being honest. I'll spend as much time with it as is necessary. But uh, so far, I'm not hearing any problem. I'm just going to let it run and run because if the worst happens, it blows a fuse and I'm out 50 cents. Let me talk to the owner and see if there's some other condition uh, that, uh, that was happening that I don't know about now. I just got off the phone with the owner and I'm pretty sure I know what's going on now. So he was playing this at an outdoor gig that was really hot in the sun. And by really hot, I mean that in Memphis, it's been about 103 degrees without taking into account uh, heat index. And it's been higher, the hotter than that for us with the humidity. It's been like 30% humidity. But uh, as far as the amp concerns, straight is concerned, straight sunlight, 103 degrees, a couple hours, that's a, a hot condition. And that's what blew the original factory fuse. And this is an original factory fuse. I believe this is the one. Yeah, this is original factory fuse from another Fender Blues, uh, so not Blues, Deluxe Reverb reissue. And this amp works fine with this fuse. When he blew the fuse that was in the amp, and this is the fuse that blew, he looked at the markings on the, the original one, and I can't show you because I don't know how to do the variable focus while talking to you and, and setting this up, but it just says bus AGC2A here and the other end it just says 250 volts underwriter, underwriters labs uh, SA 
So the markings on the original factory fuse are the same markings as the fuses that he ordered off Amazon. Now, I don't know what brand these fuses are that blew, because uh, when the fuse blew on stage, he ordered these fuses and they arrived, and the next week in his air-conditioned house, he put this fuse in this amp, powered it on, and it immediately blew. And he said he made a mistake and he powered the, amp, the power and standby on at the same time. Normally that would not matter in the slightest on a deluxe reverb. The standby switch is almost cosmetic. Um, but if this is a poorly designed cheap fuse, or if it is a fast blow fuse, and the, uh, the original one here does not say whether it is fast or slow blow at all, uh, should be uh, a, a slow blow. But the original one from Fender does not say fast or slow. I said, now, you know, we'll keep an eye on that to see if this happens again, but I suspect you just got either a very poor quality pack of fuses, or you got a bunch of fast blow fuses that aren't marked as fast blow. So let me show you on this 3 amp fuse here what a slow blow fuse looks like. If I can get it to focus right, that's good. So, 250 volts, UL, SA at that end, and this end, bus, MDL. That DL, that's a time delay, medium time delay, 3 amp. And so for most applications in a tube amp, you want a slow blow or time delay fuse. And with a slow blow 2 amp fuse, fuse this amp should be healthy and happy. And I'll order him some, some new 2 amp slow blows. I need to re replenish my own stock of those. Uh, let me show you what, what actually is happening and, and what we mean by that slow blow and fast blow and all that. Because I don't know if it's... Uh, something that most guitarists uh, are ever taught. So, while it's pretty easy to demonstrate voltage because we, we think of it graphically, uh, current's a little bit harder. So I'm just gonna stipulate that the current uh, and voltage both spike at the same time in an amp when you first power it on. When something is first drawing current or first drawing uh, has voltage applied to it. So once everything's been powered on, you may get to what we call a steady state, where it's gonna have the same voltage on it, and it's gonna have the same amount of current and the same amplitude. We're not, not gonna to get too much in the technicals on this. So if this, say that this amount of voltage and this amount of current is 1.5 amps, and you have a two amp fuse, well, this steady state of 1.5 amps will not make this two amp fuse fail. But what happens when you first power a device on is you get a big voltage spike that then goes down to a steady state. And say that this spike is 5 amps at its peak. Or it's, again, peak. That's a voltage thing, not a, a current thing. But the voltage and the current kind of go hand in hand. And this is an easy way to think of it. Anyway, you get an a inrush current spike and you get a voltage spike when something is first switched. And then it fairly quickly goes to its steady state. And let's say that two amps is right here. Well, if you have a, a fast blow fuse, which is what I suspect he, he bought, a two amps fast blow will fail right there at that initial surge where it wanted to draw five amps and you'll have a dead fuse. A slow blow fuse will allow those very brief spikes above its rating without uh, failing open, which is what it's supposed to do. You know, it's, so it lets in the occasional peaks. Uh, on, as a side note, if this happens an awful lot, the slow blow fuse will wear out and fail seemingly for no reason. So, you know, sometimes you'll have an app where the fuse fails and you put in another one and everything seems fine, you're wondering why. It's possible that that old slow blow was just subjected to so many little excursions like this that it, it was no longer able to, to, to handle it. But that slow blow fuse that will let these occasional spikes through, if your steady state were to change because you have something drawing way too much current in the amp, 
and too many cycles go through that fuse, it will fail open. So that's why we call it a time delay. So if it's just one thing that goes over, it won't fail open, it won't trip. If you have a subsequent in a row, it does. And it's a, it's a heat thing, it's a filament thing. We're not gonna get into that. But this is why, ignore that, once you have a steady state, if you have a, a slow blow fuse, you will have fewer failures. If you have a fast blow fuse, you're right on the cutting edge. And if you have a fast blow fuse that allows these spikes in, odds are it would miss uh, a problem in the steady state because you'd have to use a, a, a 5 amp fuse in this amp if just handle the spikes whereas a 2 amp fuse handles the steady state current and voltage and um, for those of you who do this kind of thing if anyone has a better idea of how to visually demonstrate current that'd be great I don't think the whole uh, plumbing and hose and buckets analogy works really well for this waveform and spikes and voltage because it kind of relates to audio waveforms that musicians are used to this 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 is visibly easier to to get across but uh, I don't know how to do a, a good little sketch of current any ideas anyway uh, for the owner of this deluxe reverb I think he's just a couple of bucks away uh, worth uh, a couple bucks worth of uh, time delay two amp fuses away from a uh, completely trustworthy amp again. So that's a good end.